Hello, everybody, and welcome to today's episode of Trade the Chain. It is Tuesday, May 4th. It is the day before Cinco de Mayo. And as CJ likes to say, it's currently sell off the Mayo. Um, <laughs> but we'll see what's going on. Some great technicals happening with Bitcoin and Ethereum. Everybody was very excited yesterday for that all time high. We're also going to hit on something that we don't particularly care for, but we have to hit on it because it's hard to ignore, and that is Dogecoin. Um, particularly with its tie to Elon Musk. And we got SNL coming up this Saturday. So we're going to see, you know, chat about that. Also, Waves. Waves is something that is blown out of the water this week. It was a, a short term trade call on Trinity Trading over Digital Asset News with Rob, CJ, myself, uh, just a week and a half ago or so. Um, so we're going to take a look at that. And then Ryan has interesting news coming for us which is a MasterCard survey, and you won't believe the amount of people that say they're going to use crypto within the next year. So without further ado, Ryan, take it away, my man. Alex, thank you. This is just a reminder that all content provided by Trade the Chain and Market Rebellion is strictly for educational and informational purposes only. Absolutely none of this is investment advice, and it should not be construed as such. Do not listen to us, ever. <laughs> Trade the Chain is brought to you by TradeTheChain.com, a global community of traders across 23 time zones. That's all of them people. Every single one that has people in it. <laughs> They're of all ages, all abilities, all backgrounds, all skill levels, and all using AI-driven sentiment indicators and actionable alerts to help them beat the market. If you, too, want to trade like a crypto insider, head on over to TradeTheChain.com and sign up. And moving over to marketrebellion.com forward slash crypto. This is Monty and myself and our community at Market Rebellion. And with us, you get trade ideas with entries, exits, and stop losses on a weekly basis, along with access to our macro portfolio allocations, a pro charting platform, a trading education curriculum, and an elite community of traders all throughout the world and much more. If you're serious about trading crypto, this is the service that gives a ton of versatility for research analytics and everything you may need. And you can sign up and start your first month trial for just a dollar at marketrebellion.com forward slash crypto. Uh, so we appreciate that guys. We have a mobile app as well to chart prices and chat uh, with the moderators being Monty and myself. Um, but with that being said, do you guys have any, anything you wanna start off with before we go into the big boards? No. Yeah. I mean, aside from May the fourth be with you. <laughs> oh God, you really had to do that. <laughs> I got nothing else. <laughs> this whole crew right now is in Puerto Rico. That's pretty amazing. This is like a whole Puerto Rican trade the chain episode right now. All yeah. right, that's all I have to say. We're all within like two miles of each other, yet we're still in separate rooms. <laughs> <laughs> Check it out the coin screener. Still bearish and bearish on the daily sentiment as well with Bitcoin. Uh, trading volume up 80% when it comes to Ethereum shows you how much it's really been plugging away in trucking. And we'll get into those technicals in just a moment. Wow, Dogecoin is now fourth overall in market oh, wow. cap with That's a remarkable. $73 billion market cap. Um, be curious to look at a list of Fortune 500 companies that are uh, less than $73 billion in total market cap. I'm sure uh, like, there's like Ford, you know, many car creators. Uh, but like when you're mass. comparing market caps of a company that actually produces products and services and has actual value, like hard value, physical value, it has assets that it can sell in a bankruptcy liquidation. I don't think that's the same as comparing it to a meme coin after- oh, Dogecoin brings $73 billion worth of happiness to our lives. Exactly, but that doesn't make it comparable to a public trade app. No, that. no, I actually you're, don't agree with those comparisons. You're right, you're 100% right. Um, this is a globally traded speculative asset. It's almost like a gold or a silver in the sense of it's true market growth and capabilities. So I agree, it's not really fair to compare them. Although it is entertaining. <laughs> Very, absolutely hilarious. <laughs> oh, let's look at Bitcoin after we've gotten this uh, little sell off here. 
So yesterday, what we were talking about was the fact that we could have seen, we had a member in chat uh, in Dan in our Market Rebellion community who said Cinco de sell-off because we were hitting this nine today. And typically after we get the nines on the TD sequential indicator, we see sell-offs and back tests of price. Sometimes that actually comes prematurely and actually occurs on the nine. And that's what we're seeing today. So we're seeing that crash, um, crash is a hard word. We're seeing that sell-off come down after we're, we're at severely overbought levels on both the Stoke and uh, the CCI here. Um, Bitcoin just wasn't able to continue with that bullish momentum. And I think we got a lot of liquidations as well. Let me just check the Bybit liquidation data because I'm willing to bet it was really high and we had a lot of uh, levered longs. Um, wow. So yeah, over a billion dollars in the Ooh. last 24 hours liquidated total. Um, let's see if we have total trader, total amount of traders that were. So yeah, in the past 24 hours, um, 200,000 traders were liquidated and that was leveraged longs primarily on Bitcoin and Ethereum. And when we got that massive sell-off down to 47K, uh, this number was five times greater. So we had a million traders get liquidated from that uh, crash earlier in the week or last week. And now it's only 200K, but still a, a large enough number to do a pretty big dent in price. Look at that. The largest liquidation uh, position was 18.17 million on BitMEX. Wow. And it was ETH. Yeah. So that really shows you how much people were, were jumping into ETH. Um, big time, big time there. So yeah, you know, we got uh, we got that correction very similar to this to the way in which we had those levered long get flushed out of the market earlier when we came down here at about 47k. So where are our support levels? Where are we thinking about buying some more coin? I like this current level. Because 54 is holding right now, um, you know. So let's draw some some support levels just to see where price may have a high probability of bouncing. Um, and I'll put one another here at the uh, previous higher low. So I'm gonna draw here too. So just. <laughs> <laughs> if you could put some happy little trees over by the TD cell nine and maybe some <laughs> yeah. clouds above the five doji. <laughs> yeah, it's like uh, Bob Ross chart. Yeah. But um, so yeah, we have our first support level really holding strong here at 52, uh, 54K. That's where a lot of whales really stepped in and bought. Um, if you look at whale map and their service, that allows you to be able to see when a lot of whales jumped in. We have a lot uh, and a lot of support at these two levels of both 51 and 54K. So I'm expecting them to hold and potentially create a nice higher low here if we continue to go down. I don't know if we will because we're starting to bounce off this little uh, 54K level at the moment. Um, when we look at the Keltner channels and what we have below here, each time we've really held nicely, except for our last previous one. Um, but as you can see, that bottom Keltner channel is starting to line up um, at that ideal level of around 51K or between 52K. So if we keep going down on Bitcoin, um, this seems like the most likely area in which we'll likely bounce, which is 52K before likely continuing higher and resuming the bull trend. So that's interesting with Bitcoin, but I do want to go over to Ethereum before we start talking about Doge and Waves, because what a run. Um, you know, we talked about some spikes in volume yesterday, uh, massive spike earlier around April 22nd. And then of course we had equal volume on May the 4th today and yesterday, May the, May the 4th, uh, 3rd. So- May the 4th. The fourth be with you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but same type of thing, right? TD sequential nine, giving you the sell signal or the warning. We're overbought and starting to get a bearish cross on the stochastic. CCI is beginning to first turn down that it's ever seen um, in since the run-up. However, due to the fact that we got a lot of those liquidations and a lot of those bad longs out of the market last night, 
Um, you know, we may be in to find some support here at around 3K. I think the weekly chart gives us a really nice picture of Ethereum and the overall macro support levels because one area that we highlighted on yesterday's stream was this critical Fibonacci level of resistance on the weekly chart at a, just over $3,500. And as you can see, I mean, I haven't even touched this chart in like the last three days. And, and it just perfectly acted as resistance on that top Fibonacci level. So I think a lot of traders were looking at this chart and looking at these levels and placing their trades against them. So very interesting to see there, but for the next support levels down for the big boards, I think we're looking at 52K for Bitcoin and 3K for Ethereum. Okay, so listen, bottom line is you gotta drink a little more beer tomorrow just to soften the blow, but it is what it is. We can't be positive all the time. No, we can't. Um, uh, as, as anyone who watches the show will tell you about me, but um, you know, there's one chart that I think is compelling as far as ETH's long-term case goes. And for whatever reason, I can't share my screen. So I'm not going to show it. But the numbers behind it um, are basically the amount of uh, ETH that are, that's held on smart contracts versus the, number, the amount of ETH held on exchanges. So 22.8% of ETH supply is held in smart contracts and only 12% is held on exchanges. A lot of people, when they're looking at Bitcoin and they look at when uh, it will potentially go up, um, when whales and others take Bitcoin off an exchange, right? And they put it into cold storage. That's a sign that they believe ETH is going, not ETH, Bitcoin is going to go higher. When you're looking at ETH, it, might, it makes more sense to look at how much is held in smart contracts because that's, that includes, if I'm not mistaken, includes, but it's not limited to uh, 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 ETH in DeFi projects as well, which has gone up significantly. Um, it's up to what, like it's well over 70 billion at this point. Yeah. But when you Brian, have that, yeah. Is this the chart you were referring to? Yes, the glass node chart. chart. I couldn't find, I couldn't share my screen. Why did you just say so? We would have had this up earlier. I, it just popped into my head right now. But when you see how the amount of ETH held in smart contracts is almost, it's not directly correlated, but there's a, it's just a definite correlation between those two numbers, ETH market cap and the amount of uh, ETH held in smart contracts. It, it, it's a good long-term sign for this dip being only temporary. Wow, that's a beautiful correlation. Very mm -hmm. nice chart. Love Glassnode. I wish I made that chart. I'm just not, I'm not that smart. I'm not as smart as Glassnode. All right, very cool. Let's head on over to Doge because that's what everybody, if they're not talking about it, is going to be talking about it. And one of the things that's hyping this thing uh, like nobody's business is the fact that the self-proclaimed CEO of Doge, Elon Musk, is making, he's, he's uh, hosting uh, a Saturday Night Live this Saturday, right? I mean, yeah, but... A lot of people are looking for a Saturday pump, Brian. Come on. Not everyone's excited about that. I mean, you have multiple SNL cast members saying they refuse to appear on stage with them. And they really, really, yeah. The SNL has a longstanding policy of if the cast members don't want to appear, appear alongside a, a host, that host still goes on the show because obviously it's ratings generating if they don't want to be there, but they don't have to go on. Do, do you think, what do you, here's one for you guys. And, and no, I'm not going to, uh, wager my, um, my, my my zero tokens this time. That's a loss proposition. But what do you think uh, are the chances that he mentions Doge on SNL? Just in passing, any which way? Um, pretty hard. Okay, CJ? One hundo P. <laughs> SNL talks about crypto fairly often. Do you often. think Doge hits a dollar if he mentions it on uh, SNL? Think there's no. enough hype in that train? No. Okay. I do think right. Doge will hit a dollar. You do? Yeah. When? Christmas. Oh. Winter. Right now. <laughs> Not so like question. when he goes on. I mean, just months yeah. on the road. This speculation can continue. That's when I uh, I saw online on Twitter earlier today. I wish I could remember who wrote this tweet. I'm sorry if I'm I'm, I'm not trying to steal this from you. It's just I thought it was a good question. <laughs> uh, if you're if you somehow end up watching, uh, th th this person asked, 
Is Doge hitting 57 cents, um, you know, a black eye or a stain on crypto because it's a joke coin? Or is it proof that, you know, the system works, that there is no way to control the markets like, like is done uh, in traditional finance? What do you guys think? I don't have a I don't have an answer to that to be honest. It's a it's a great question, but I I can't really speak sensibly when it comes to Doge being in the topic. CJ. So the question is, Doge. I'm is sorry. Doge success, yeah, Doge's success is that a black eye or a stain on crypto and proof that the whole thing is illegitimate, or is it? proof that the actual construct works, that you can't just control something centrally like you do uh, fiat currencies. Or, yeah, you're I right think. on that. I, I think it, it shows that it, it, it can work because you can't control something, you know, that is what it is, right? Decentralized and whatnot. Um, but I do, I don't appreciate it being a meme coin and being having such a high profile on something that so many people around the world, uh, you know, worked so hard on to create legitimacy for, which is the crypto markets in general. I mean, I think it's an ideo ideological thing in the sense that, uh, like, the, the thing I would hear all the time in 2017, you don't hear it as much nowadays because institutions are adopting Bitcoin and there's like a thesis and a narrative behind it. But I always used to hear, oh, what's the value of Bitcoin? It's not backed by anything. Or, oh, there's nothing behind Bitcoin. It's just speculative fervor. But the same thing is true for, for Dogecoin. And, you know, I think that's an important lesson that new investors really need to learn. They need to learn that uh, hype rules all and that value is subjective and that yeah. narratives drive speculative bubbles. And this is exactly what we're seeing. Now, is it going to be a black eye on the cryptocurrency space? My opinion is no. Um, you know, I think that capital is eventually going to go to other projects because people will realize there's more to crypto than just Bitcoin and Dogecoin. There's a lot of innovation occurring. And I don't think that, you know, nobody's going to rug pull Do Dogecoin in the sense that it will experience a volatile hack or something like the Dow. Um, that capital I'm thinking will eventually flow to other projects as we progress further on. What if, uh, what if Doge is really the people's currency? Like, what if it somehow becomes the transactional crypto? It has the throughput. It has a blockchain that's capable of all these things and enough people are starting to use it and it has liquidity. What if it actually does become the cr transactional crypto of choice? Like if a PayPal enables it or you, uh, credit card merchant services platform. That's, that, that's, not a, that's not a really off base comment. I mean, you that what the Dallas Mavericks allowed at concession stands mm -hmm. now. Um, Oakland Athletics are now allowing it as well for box yeah. seats at whatever they call their stadium now. Yeah. Uh, so uh, listen to me. It, it it already seems like it's it's the people's currency in a couple different uh, places. But uh, let me ask you this: Does uh, the Oakland Athletics allow you to buy those uh, seats for with Bitcoin? I don't think so. Yeah. So you just answered it. It's people's currency at the Oakland in, at the Oakland Athletics. I mean that's. This is a this is like a science experiment gone wrong. Can we see the charts? <laughs> it is a science experiment gone wrong because it was not intended to be what it is today. Yeah. Um, but it just it's such a lesson in subjective value. And you know the cool thing about where we're at now is that if you look on the charts and you see this particular nine candle in our last run up in. Uh, in April, you know, we came down after that nine candle on the daily chart, consolidated, and have now made new peaks at 61 cents. However, we're seeing that same nine candle. So is it a buy the rumor, sell the Saturday Night Live? I don't know. But if we get a bearish engulfing candle at the top of this uptrend that is somewhat similar to this one, then, you know, I think we will go back down and, and test this middle Keltner channel or the 20 simple period moving average. And then, you know, probably we'll continue going back up and, and we'll see something like this. Uh, but ultimately, I'd watch out for that TD cell nine. I think uh, Elon going on 
Saturday Night Live might be an interim top. We'll see. But uh, <laughs> it's certainly going to be interesting. I think what kills it, what will absolutely kill it, I buy some. Yeah, if you buy it, folks, it's going to go down. So um, I think it, we just saw the one and only time that CJ will uh, do technical analysis on the Doge chart. <laughs> He's not happy about that. Until um, more baseball teams start accepting it for box seats. <laughs> then he might have to just line it up into the big boards. It's the fourth largest crypto, guys. The fourth yeah, largest. Overtook crypto. XRP. It's fourth largest, uh, 72, 73 billion. It's crazy. It doesn't make sense. Um, but also worth remembering the U.S. dollar isn't backed by anything physical, right? It's just the good faith of the U.S. government, which has almost collapsed several times under the weight of financial panics and, and, and even the great uh, uh, recession. And um, well, the know, difference is the difference is, you know, one, it's a, it, it has a has a promise behind it. The whether you think it's meaningful or meaningless it has a promise behind it. Dogecoin, in all fairness to what your arguments have been, Ryan, is it's a fair market currency, right? It's worth what it is because the people the people have dictated it. So it's very it's fairly valued because it's free market. Well, that's what I was getting at, right? When you have something that has an artificial price floor and a, an artificial ceiling, they just manage it in a channel, basically. And then you have something where it's like if sports teams didn't just artificially floor the price of their tickets. And until they go on StubHub and then you see what the actual price of them is, right? It's the same concept, right? Sports tickets on StubHub are like Dogecoin and the US dollar is like buying them from, directly from a team. And it's, it almost feels like that's what a currency market should be, even though it's wildly and unstable. But if more people used it, I think it would stabilize. And yeah. I think what limits Bitcoin is its throughput and its lack of like real utility. Whereas Dogecoin shockingly does have utility. Um, I'm not going to buy any. Nope. But uh, I, I just, I'm coming around on it. I am. I'm coming around on what it could be potentially based on how, how it's been performing this year and what, what, where its use cases are springing up out of nowhere. Okay. Bitcoin, Bitcoin is improving though through soft forks. Like we should definitely have a more extended episode where we talk about Taproot and the benefits that will come from that soft fork. But before we before we keep kind of muddling on about doge let's get some waves because yeah let's go to wave wave was uh listen cj we're on uh, rob channel doing trinity trading and um i i picked waves off of the trade to chain sentiment analysis uh coin screener page um for a short term i love this guys listen for a short term pop uh quick trade it went up um about 10 11 percent got out at seven percent for a very quick pop and it, then it, it decided to retrace a lot of people uh started saying flack you know why'd you pick this it stinks dude if we said it was for a short-term trade and then the long-term sentiment was bullish and look at where it's gone now that was at twenty dollars now it's at thirty what are we thirty five dollars yeah, we did yeah. this one. 19, 19, 5 or 19, 8 yeah. was the, uh, entry. So very nice gain after that one. Um, but yeah, we did take some flack because it initially went down like a couple percent. And it's like, a lot of hate comments. Jeez. Okay. Um, but what I love about lot. this one is the surges in volume. Like this volume I talked about yesterday can be such a, an important. Uh, leading indicator of where price is likely going to go. And you can see it was followed up by some more spikes in volume. Now, I, if I were in this position, would probably be satisfied with that yeah. over 100% gain and would likely take some off the table because we are reaching that TD cell nine on the one day. And I will likely anticipate, you know, something like that occurring. But we also have a bearish crossover on the stochastic. So we'll have to see how that one plays out as well. But I, you know, this could go up even after I take profits, uh, but regardless have to be disciplined and have to take profit on the TD sequential cell nine, especially because this trade is up already over hundred percent. Yeah, and that's just, I mean, listen, that's CJ holding to his conviction. He's, he loves technical analysis. It's what he does. And if you can't hold to your conviction, then don't say you have one, right? I mean, uh, you ha it is a disciplined sport. And so you got to stick with it, whether you think uh, you're going to like the decision or not. Um, 
Ryan. Yes, sir. Let's roll into this news survey. Over 15,000 people across 18 countries. Not the same amount of time zones as we have in TTC, no, but 18 no. countries. No, no, they're not as global as we are. However, 40% uh, of these people uh, across these 18 countries said they plan to use cryptocurrency in the next year. When you dive down deeper into it, though, millennials, you know, 67% uh, said they were more open to using the technology than they were a year ago. 77% said they were more interested in learning about it. And 75% said they would use crypto if they understood it better. So there's a few takeaways from, from this, right? If 40% of people across 18 countries use crypto in any capacity, because it doesn't specifically say what the use case is, right? Mm -hmm. If they use it, they still have to buy it, right? And we were talking about this before the show. If they have to buy it, if 40% of people in 18 countries buy crypto, I mean, I can't, I would love to see what happens to the market cap of a, of a Dogecoin or a, a Litecoin. No, I'm kidding. Just a, a, like Bitcoin or ETH, you know? Like I'd love yeah. to see what happens with them. And then also, if 75% of people don't feel like they understand it well enough, that's on us. Maybe not us personally, partially, but it's on us as an industry, right? We have to do a better job of educating people on the benefits of it. Stop talking about the technology and start talking about the benefits, the reasons why people should use it, the, why, the reasons why they are using it. Pull out the use cases, showcase studies, and really drive home the point that this is why this matters. Uh, until we can you know, make that shift from technology first to benefit first, I think uh, crypto is going to you know, grow in fits and starts rather than that, that Cambrian explosion we keep talking about. You know? Yeah, it's a hundred percent based uh, education based, um, you know, process. And, you know, to your point, the more that people explain it as easy as possible to the layman, like <laughs> you got to think like you're explaining it to your parents, right? That's the only way adoption is going to happen. Um, and if anybody is new to crypto and is curious, hop on over to marketrebellion.com. I think they have a free uh, DeFi video going and what that is. So if you don't know about that, uh, check it out. But they put out a lot of cool, easy to understand um, videos on crypto, as well as uh, definitely got to give a shout out to uh, Rob, uh, Dan teaches crypto.com. It's 100% free as well. And they uh, he put together a bunch of awesome educational videos there. That's Dan teaches crypto.com. I really actually got to put that in the description and the links here so people uh, see that every episode. Um, Alex, so, yeah. you're getting one of the most important sources of, uh, of uh, education for would be crypto traders or new crypto traders the TTC member resources portal. We have that all these how to videos. We have all these step by step videos. We have all these setup videos, all these ways to understand the data on TTC, how to set up a MetaMask wallet, how to do all these things that you need to do to trade across uh, platforms and exchanges. So, yeah, we, we actually got to put one out. We got to put one out on Zero Exchange um, with uh, crossing the bridges, wrapping the tokens, and, and doing that because a um, huge amount of questions. To be quite honest with you, uh, sitting down here in Puerto Rico, we've actually been practicing our game here, uh, CJ, Ryan, and myself. So um, we've been playing around extensively on Zero Exchange. Um, and I think, I mean, I feel like yesterday we had a breakthrough, guys. I mean, we kind of began to understand it. You know, we, we were doing successful things and stuff like that on BSC and, and ETH. So... Um, we're going to put a big video together of what we uh, learned. We actually uh, brought Weston uh, down to uh, to get him in on this. So um, we'll do that. But yeah, a lot of education out there. Just got to know where to find it. Absolutely. What's that? I said, do we get enough plugs in right there? But, uh, you know, it's yeah, so no, funny. I, I don't know where, I don't know how to like point people in the right direction, but yet every time you do, pe people just sound like shills, right? Go here, go there. I don't know what to do. I'm just giving I'm you like, a lot of time. But, I'm but I think the point I want to make about zero and what we kind of figured out when we were hanging in your lovely table dining room right there last night <laughs> was the fact that when you, when you buy something in crypto, um, I've found the best opportunities are when you use the product and there's a great team. Um, Voyager, you know, I hold Voyager still yeah. I the team. I believe in the growth of that brokerage. 
I don't hold Stormax anymore, um, but you can, the, the product is easy to use. There's use case there. And that's what I experienced with Zero yesterday. And all of the exploration into that exchange, I think if you use it and you see the benefits firsthand, it gives you a lot more conviction in that initial investment um, if you choose to do so. You're absolutely right. I totally agree. And that's why we de that's why we delve deep into these things and make the mistakes before you have to. So, <laughs> you know, unlike Ryan's opening, you can listen to a little bit of what we said. And those are the mistakes that we make. And we tell you those are mistakes that we made. So well, we're, we're more like the, uh, we're the on ramp to the bridge, right? We're not going to walk you across the bridge, but we'll get you to the foot of it. And we will try not to throw you off it either. Um, that being said, uh, folks, we will see you tomorrow. Cinco de Mayo. Um, hang on to your handlebars. Happy trading. Thank you so much for watching us. Uh, CJ from MarketRebellion.com. Best here in crypto, Ryan Gorman, myself. We'll talk to you later. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye.